You guys really liked the video where I programmed and burned a PS1 game, but there were a few imperfections which I want to improve. First of all, you guys mentioned that I basically wrote an Atari game for the PlayStation, which I suppose is true. Well, in retrospective, Atari games were better than whatever I wrote, so can't blame you for that. The other thing that you mentioned a lot is that I could have used a virtual machine. I know, I just wanted to make things a little bit more interesting with some old hardware. So today I am here to redeem myself. I'm actually going to write a game with the magical third dimension. Actually using the third dimension on the PlayStation is a little bit more difficult for a few reasons I'll explain during the video. But now, without further ado, let's get programming. You guys recommended to me a lot of different ways to stop torturing myself, like finally using the PS Noob SDK and using a different emulator. I also decided that I want to stop being a masochist and use a normal computer. And I am definitely not going to write vertices of a cube by hand. Let's go! Woo! We have a cube, which is already much better than what I achieved in my previous video. <laughs> so how does this work? Computer graphics work by defining points in 3D space, which we call vertices. These vertices are then connected up by lines. The result is a polygon. We can use these polygons to build any model we want. And we can then scale, rotate and move or translate the model anywhere we want with linear algebra. Al al algebra. Linear algebra. Linear. Linear algebra. Right, that's the thing. The problem with the PlayStation is that it doesn't have what's called a Z buffer. The Z buffer is used by modern graphics card to determine which polygons should be drawn on top of other polygons. This action is done automatically by the graphics card, and when it fails, it looks something like this. The PlayStation solves polygon overlapping with something called ordering tables, which are basically big lists in which we define the order of polygons. This list isn't computed automatically, unlike the Z buffer. We have to supply it ourselves, to my absolute demise. I haven't actually thought of what game I'm actually trying to make until now. I guess I should have thought of that before I started. I'm just going to make the same thing as last time, but in 3D. Okay, so I tried to uh, add a floor and this is exactly what happens when you are as dumb as I am and mess up the order of calculating matrices. I hate linear algebra. Now, that's what I call a good floor. The interesting thing about the PlayStation is that it has a Geometry Transformation Engine, or GTE. You see, today's processors are extremely fast and computing a matrix is basically nothing for them. But the situation back in the day was a little bit different. That's why Sony decided to put a chip on the board exclusively for linear algebra. Whenever you build a matrix and want it calculated, you just send it over the data bus and the GTE returns the result way faster than the console CPU ever could. Okay, so let's stop just spinning the cube and bouncing it around and let's actually give it some controls. I want to control this cube and I want to see it from third person. So let's see if I can do that. Hopefully. Um, you guys were really upset that I didn't give you the code and that I didn't get technical enough in my previous video. But yeah, I did the wrong assumption to not give you the source code. I will give you the source code for this when it's done. And I am getting a little bit more technical in this video, so I hope you like it.
Nice, we have camera controls now. Now I just need to pair it to the cube and move it with it, so let's do that. Oh, oh, it works, it works, let's go. After what seems like an eternity, I finally managed to do this. We have a third person camera following a cube. Of course, I will raise the cube above, you know, ground level, so it's not, so it's not half buried, but this is good for now. But now I need a break. This seriously took like three hours. So now that I have functional movement in my game, I can start thinking about the next order of business. Enemies. And since the enemies were a little bit dumb in the previous game, I have decided that I want to improve them. And before I could even start thinking about improving them, Build Guy commented under the previous video a way to improve them. So thank you Build Guy. I'm going to implement your method. Build Guy's method works as follows. Take your enemies, one by one, and choose a random angle, as in direction, in which they are going to go. Each and every frame, increase or decrease that angle by a random, non-trivial amount. So first of all, I need code to generate the enemies and place them in random places, so that's going to be a simple for loop. <laughs> this was pretty simple. Now when you start a game, you have enemies. And now I just need to make them move, which should be pretty easy. Well, it's going suspiciously well. The enemies are moving in a more intelligent way. They're not just choosing a random di direction every frame. They're actually like increasing and decreasing their, you know, angle in which they're going. So now there's one more thing to do, which is actually detecting when we hit something. And I'm not going to write any fancy box colliders for that. I'm just going to calculate the distance between the two objects and if it's close enough, I'll detect a hit, because writing a box collider would be, frankly, pretty overkill. It's going so well that I might actually get some sleep today. <laughs> well, that was easier than I thought. When you hit someone, it says game over. Wait. Why the f haven't I been using screen capture all this time? I'm an idiot! So as I was saying, you can now lose by coming in contact with an enemy. Anyway, now I need to implement winning, which is going to be easy because it's basically the same thing as losing, only displaying a different message and doing it when I hit a different box. But what I want to do differently from last time is to not force the user to restart their console when they want to replay their game. If that actually will happen, if anyone will actually want to replay it. So when you lose slash win, it will wait like three seconds or five and then it will restart the game. And you can even win the game now. As you can see, I added a floating yellow cube, which indicates the finish. Once the player reaches it, a win message is shown. So now the last thing to do is burn it onto the disk and try if it works on the real console. I'm not sure if it will work. I'm not sure if it will run smoothly because I used many, let's say, inefficient techniques but yeah maybe it will work and if it doesn't then i won't have any sleep one more thing i messed up in my last video is that i forgot to say that my console is mod chip and i got a lot of comments about it and i apologize to anyone who might have thought that i discovered some new way to you know run homebrew without mod chips sorry Okay, so now it's just a matter of taking the disc and burning it. And we are burning. And while that gets done, I'm going to prepare my PlayStation. Now, where did I put it? Oh my god. It's in the corner. Wish me luck. Ah, here it is. Ah, this place is a mess as always. Let's go. There's a game in it. What the hell? 
Oh, it's my old game. Well, <laughs> well, I suppose I haven't used it since the video, so... Okay, so this is the moment of truth. It either will work or it won't. I mean, looks cool. Let's, let's press reset. That's normal. Green. Yes, let's go. No. That looks corrupted as hell. Okay, so I have found an error. Okay, the lights and screen might be gone. They're playing. They're actually playing. Where is my controller? Okay, it seems that the reset routine only worked in the emulator and not on the console itself. We'll do it the old way. And yes, it works. It works. Okay, so... Yeah, it's a little bit slow because my code optimization isn't the best. But when I reach the finish... Yes, it works. Oh my god. Actual 3D graphics on the PlayStation written by me. And also this black band down here. I have no idea why that's there. Well, maybe it's because... Well, wait. Did I compile the game for NTSC when I'm pal? I'm an idiot. Okay, we have come to the end of this very treacherous video. It was very much requested and I was very much in stress to make it right for you guys to like it because the first one exploded so much that I was really stressed to make this one better or at least, or at least as good as the first one and I hope I achieved that and there are a few news I want to tell you. Uh, yeah, my channel reached, what now? Something like six and a half thousand subscribers right now as I'm, as I'm recording this. So yeah, that's quite a lot. So I created a Discord server. It's, well, in the description and maybe here if YouTube allows that. Or here if YouTube allows that. And uh, in there you will find me right after this video premieres. I will be there in voice channel and you can talk with me about the video, you can give me some feedback, and we can have a nice chat. I also have an Instagram, which I created even though I don't know how to use Instagram, I'm a little bit of a boomer, but I have been, at least I hope, putting there some snippets of today's recording, so if you found